I still am very interested to learn more and see more uh, relating to these extraordinary videos. Because if indeed they are, they are clearly some of the most astounding photos of, uh, of Sasquatch in existence. And so uh, I'm, uh, well, well, this has been a fascinating visit and I've been uh, uh, immensely impressed. I've been able to see for the first time uh, some complete segments of Todd Standing's filming of Sasquatches in another, in another area where he's worked on and with him explaining the background, which is so important. And uh, I'm firmly convinced that he has filmed Sasquatches and that he has, what he has portrayed in his documentaries are indeed very close portraits, in fact, of the Sasquatch face. For the video I zoomed in 20 times optical and obviously had no tripod. I remained in this position for at least 20 minutes while the animal you see in video 4 moved from one position to the next. I was situated over 50 yards away and downhill from his position. I was hiding beneath a large pine tree and covered by my ghillie suit. The snow was melting so I was having to switch back and forth from video camera to still camera as water would drop down onto the lenses. He would regularly disappear from my line of sight as I'm sure he was searching for me in a direction of about 180 degrees. This animal certainly knew I was around but I suspect that he had no idea how close I actually was. What they were doing, it was, it was amazing how they had this spectacularly implemented plan to ensure that I didn't get into the spot I wanted. Um, the day watcher had discovered me and uh, I became aware of it. Moments later he disappeared and I knew at that point that uh, he'd alerted the main group and I expected that as a, in the past these animals would simply move away. This group is entirely different from the previous group I was studying Sylvanic. Previously they would become aware of us, they would simply move away and really have virtually no interaction with us after that. This species I would say based on where they are because the region that they uh, inhabit is overlooking an area where hunters hunt and kill. They see men with guns all the time from their high points up in the mountains. They stand their ground. These guys don't back away. They don't run away. They stand their ground and uh, they push me out. This has been a big reality check for me. Like I said earlier in the previous expedition that I was on uh, last year in August when I was tremendously successful, I lost my video camera because they actually threw stones and logs and branches at me to the point where it injured me. For the next three days as I returned to base camp, this group of Sasquatch harassed me relentlessly. After sleeping less than 30 minutes, I was awakened by rocks that were thrown at me and growling sounds from multiple directions. After two nights of this, I'd had enough, so you'll see me here crack open one of my big flares. Damn it. God damn it. Damn it. These growling sounds you hear are from six to ten yards away, again in multiple directions. Now you can hear rocks thrown at me and various animals closing in on me from multiple positions. Shit.
Here you can hear a large male walk within four yards of you, and after my screaming and shouting, walk the other way. Fuck! where we are attempting to conduct a study of the species commonly referred to as Bigfoot. My team and I have been on over 30 expeditions into this region, and two by me have yielded significant close proximity contact with these animals. For this October 2010 expedition, although there certainly were significant dangers including the grizzly bear confrontation, I suffered only minor injuries. So before I get into detail of the expedition itself, I'd like to thank Radium Police as well as Kimberly and Invermere Search and Rescue. This region of the Rocky Mountains is certainly some of the most dangerous backcountry in the continent. Very few people ever use these trails, and a high percentage that do disappear or are killed. This area between Kootenai and Banff National Parks is where wildlife officers relocate bears and mountain lions that have become dangerous to people. So here are these spring 2011 photographs. I'll start out with this one. Uh, a photograph I'm still very proud of, but obviously doesn't show a whole lot. If it was all that I got, it would have never been proven as Bigfoot. Here's one of the photographs. This looks like an artist's drawing, but it's not. It's actually a photograph. I just had to crank up the contrast and brightness and saturation so you could have a good look and see his eyes and his nose and his fur and everything that's, that's there. And you'll obviously see it's the same animal as, as this guy is. He's a day watcher. This one, there was some sun coming through the trees, and you can see the, how it's sort of lit up the front of his face. Now we'll go into the videos, and the videos are all, again, of this same exact day watcher. So we start out with this one. All we'll be able to see here is an eyeball. Actually, his whole body is there. His shoulders, everything. You can see his eye right there in the middle of the screen. I'll highlight that for you again in a second. But uh, there it is. It's highlighted, so you can see his eye. And if you actually watch in the previous one a little bit, you can see it blink as well. Now, uh, obviously, this one and the video to follow this one we're watching right here where he's in the bottom right hand side really not significant evidence at all this illustrates actually if anything else how much of a difficult time I was having getting my focus I'm trying to focus through you know a half a dozen trees and branches and uh, again if this is all the evidence that I had it really wouldn't have been worth anything um, you can barely see him moving there uh, at this point obviously you could even argue that was probably a bear you can see dark fur and and the lighter color in his face on this one, it's getting pretty definitive. You can really see a nose and lips on the bottom left-hand side. You can see a little bit of movement out of him. And uh, just amazing to me how well camouflaged his whole body and, and all of him was. This is the one that was released to media. When I released this video still to the media, I gave them a blurry one. I gave them about, the, the video still I gave them was right about here. And as you can see here, crystal clear. You can even see an insect fly up off of him, so a really clear shot. This one I had to really crank up on the, uh, the brightness and the uh, saturation. There's an eye blink for you, but uh, again, the same animal as you're seeing in all these videos. I will slow it down a little bit for those of you who missed the eye blink. You can see his head moving there really slowly as well, but uh, again, I'll slow down for the eye blink for those of you who missed it. 